Are you wanting to lock Travis Kelsey in with your first round pick? Are you thinking about going quarterback early this year because you want some of the stability that comes with that position? You know what? If you're interested in dominating your league by going with that type of a strategy, then this mock draft is gonna show you exactly how to do it. Yo, Headliner Nation, this is a mock draft video that I've been wanting to do for a while now because we all know that people are gonna be fighting over Travis Kelsey in the first round. And then on top of that, this year more than ever, I'm hearing people say, I wanna try and go quarterback a little bit early because I want the stability that comes with that position. So I said, you know what? Let's start a draft with both and see how it plays out. But if you feel like you need help with your draft this year and you're just not sure what to do, then you need to order our 2023 fantasy football draft guide. It has almost 300 videos that you will not find here on YouTube and exclusive content that you won't find in any draft guide anywhere. And for $21.99, it is the best investment that you can make for your fantasy season. And you know what? If you leave a comment on this video and we get to 750 likes, I'm going to choose somebody to get one for free. And if you already bought yours, that's okay. We'll just refund you. So hit the like button and make sure you leave me a comment for later in this video about how you think this team turned out. Headliner Nation, we've already jumped into the draft. We are into round three already, but I wanted to kind of skip ahead a little bit for the beginning of this video because what we're going to be doing in this mock draft is starting tight end and quarterback. And the reason for that is that there are a lot of people out there that this year are all in on just taking Travis Kelsey in the first round so they do not have to worry about trying to find somebody to start on a weekly basis. And that makes sense. But then there's also a lot of talk about potentially taking a quarterback in round two and taking some of that safety value that comes along with the quarterback position. So in this mock draft, I'm going six out of 12 spots and I'm gonna be starting, as you can see on the screen, with Travis Kelsey and then my number one quarterback, Josh Allen, because in this instance, Patrick Mahomes was taken before him, so I couldn't do a stack to show you what that would look like. And for this mock, I'm using Sleeper's platform and I'm actually going to be going up against the computer because really what I wanted to get a sense of from this mock draft was what a bunch of different strategies would look like going along with my strategy. And by using Sleeper's computer, it's taking a combination of ADP and projections to put together the best lineups possible. If I were to fill this with a bunch of members of Headliner Nation, I feel like it would be really running back heavy to start with. And because of that, it might not look the way some of your drafts out there would look as well. All right, but like I mentioned, started with Travis Kelsey and then went a quarterback in the second round to see what value would lie after that and whether or not we have to say, hey, in the first two rounds, if I'm gonna lock in either a quarterback or a tight end, these are the other options that I would need to lock in along with it. And you know that I love my running back. So at this point, I really feel like with the way the board has fallen, I need to lock in a running back. And the two top guys on the board, Najee Harris and Travis Etienne, if you want some safety, you're probably going with Najee Harris. If you want some upside, you're probably going with Travis Etienne. And based on this start that I have and the way my roster looks through two rounds, I'm gonna want a little bit of safety at the running back position to ensure that I can trust that guy on a weekly basis. So let's go ahead and lock in Najee Harris right now to be my RB1 on my team. And I feel like, again, that gives us a little bit of a safer floor with the running back position, even if we do give some of that upside away that would have came with Travis Etienne. All right, taking a minute to pause the draft again so we can look through all of our options. Now, I went safety with Najee Harris. If I'm going to want to go upside, that's probably going to be Jameer Gibbs here. You could go with safety again with Joe Mixon if you would like. Taking a look at wide receivers, Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, those guys in those areas. I like DJ Moore this season, but kind of this is kind of the dead area for me for wide receivers because I'm not really feeling anybody here. So for me personally, since I went safety with Najee, 
Najee Harris. You know what? I'm going to go a little upside and I'm going to go with Jameer Gibbs at this pick. And then when it wraps around to me, I'm going to hope that one of those tight end targets I have shortly after that, or excuse me, wide receiver targets continue to be there. So let's go ahead and lock in Jameer Gibbs and we'll see what happens after this. All right. So one of my top options that I was looking for was going to be Jerry Judy because I thought DJ Moore was going to be gone. But DJ Moore makes it back to me, which is absolutely perfect because he is a guy that if you are waiting a little bit on wide receivers for, he's okay with going as my wide receiver one. Now, there could be some up and downs. There could be some inconsistencies, but I'm not going to hate it if he's my wide receiver one, especially if I feel like I got some safety at my other positions. So let's go ahead and lock in DJ Moore here as my wide receiver one. And I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to say, DJ Moore is your wide receiver one, Kyle. I'm not feeling it, and that's okay, and I completely understand that. And as it rolls back to me here real quick, let's go ahead and pause it again, and let's just kind of go over really what we have and what the other teams have done. And once again, drafting against Sleeper's computer, I like it right now because it's giving me an opportunity to see a few different strategies in play. For instance, you see some balanced approaches. You see some teams that have gone running back heavy, and you see some teams that have gone wide receiver heavy. And I'm trying to stay decently balanced with my team, obviously, but because we have two flex options and two wide receiver options, I'm still kind of open to a lot of different possibilities right now. So again, Obviously, you could say, Kyle, you need another wide receiver. I would get that. Is there anybody here that excites me? I do like Christian Kirk. I potentially like Mike Evans. Definitely want to get my boy George Pickens. Now, in all the drafts I've done, I've had to get George Pickens a little bit earlier than what you may be thinking out there based on ADP and ranks and things like that. But go get your guys. So let's take a look at running backs real quick as well. Javante Williams, Rashad Wright, Alvin Kamara finding out right now that uh, he's not going to be facing any jail time. You could be getting a steal in about the sixth round right now with him. So for me personally, one thing I want to do, again, I've kind of gone some safety at the beginning. Kelsey, Allen, Harris are all going to be safe draft picks, right? Now, at this point in time, I take a look at it is a little too early for Alvin Kamara. I'm going to have to make a choice. If I want George Pickens and if I want Alvin Kamara, I would have to take them both probably right now. Or do I want some more safety that Isaiah Pacheco would end up bringing? So for me, I know for a fact I want George Pickens on my roster. I need another wide receiver as well. I'm actually going to go ahead and jump and draft him right now, even though it's a little bit early, because again, I don't think I'm going to be able to wait possibly maybe get them in the next round, but I've also got some other guys I'm looking at in the next round that if I get them, I'm still happy with. So I'm going to take the guy that I really want, let everybody else draft. And then at that point, I'm going to make a decision on what's best for me. So let me go ahead and pause the draft again and let's take a look and see what we got here. Kamara goes off the board right before me, but a guy that I talked about, right? I talked about a couple of different running backs, Isaiah Pacheco being one of them. Now I have an opportunity to draft him. And again, it kind of puts me back into that safety mode where I might have been taking a risk with Kamara, didn't know if I really felt it or not, kind of let the board play out. And hey, I'm going to look at it as, hey, it just was not meant to be. Pacheco was supposed to be my guy. So we're going to go ahead and draft him right now. All right. Now, even though I'm not a huge fan of the start of trying to go like tight end and quarterback right off the rip. I did get some really good value with Najee Harris. I do feel like I got really good value with DJ Moore. My running backs aren't looking that bad right now. I don't love, I, I still don't love that strategy. But the one thing that I can tell you that I don't mind about it, and that probably helps you out, is kind of in these middle rounds right now, you're not scrambling to say, oh man, am I gonna draft a tight end, quarterback, what's gonna happen? You've taken care of it. So right now, you're really trying to hammer the value at wide receiver and running back. And again, with two flex spots, personally, I'm wanting to start four running backs Backs a week. So when I take a look at Najee Harris, Jameer Gibbs, and Isaiah Pacheco, gone a little bit of upside to mix with some safety. But what I would really like to do at this point is to get a fourth running back 
that is the presumed starter on his team. And when you take a look at the running backs that are listed here, really the only guy that we know for sure is gonna be Brian Robinson. So if I were to take him right now, again, my running, wide receivers aren't looking great, but my running backs are reinforced. I'm set at quarterback, absolutely set at tight end, and now I can start taking shots at wide receivers. And if I only have to start two of them, that's okay. So let's go ahead and lock in Brian Robinson right now. We'll put him as our RB4, and I think that is excellent value right now. Antonio Gibson is going to be getting some passing game work, and I do think they're going to try to get him a little bit more involved this year, but it's okay. For me personally, Brian Robinson is a guy, if I have to put him out there as my RB4 and he scores a touchdown, which could happen any week, that's going to be perfect for my lineup. Okay, I've got my quarterback and my tight end locked in. I've got four starting running backs locked in. Lots of different things I can do there. Now it's time to reinforce my wide receivers and try to find a little bit of upside to go with George Pickens and DJ Moore. So when we take a look at wide receivers, we have some opportunities here. We could go Gabe Davis, super risky, but with Josh Allen's elbow injury last year and his ankle injury, I don't think he reached his full potential. There's a lot of upside there, and I could stack him with Josh Allen, which I really like. You could also go with Juju Smith-Schuster, who in New England could potentially see the majority of the targets. That's a little bit more safe than what Gabe Davis would be. We also could go down a little bit to Rashad Bateman. We know that that offense is gonna be a little bit more pass heavy this year than what we've seen in the past, right? Which is good. It's gonna help Lamar Jackson maybe reach his ceiling again that we saw from a few years ago but lots of targets added there. So is he gonna just be the deep play guy? Is he gonna be the guy that's gonna actually see the volume? We don't know about that. And then you got a guy like Elijah Moore who definitely could end up being somebody that we look at as a breakout candidate this year. Me personally, I am gonna get a little bit risky with it. I tried to stay safe with my running backs I've got the wide receiver one in Chicago. I've got George Pickens who could potentially be, you know, the wide receiver one, two with Deontay Johnson and really be the deep threat. I'm going to stack Gabe Davis with Josh Allen. I just like the, the potential for upside there so much that I'm going to go ahead and grab him even if there's a lot of risk involved with it. Because again, I've locked in all my other positions. I'm just taking shots at wide receivers right now. And as it comes back to me, I have an idea here of what I would like to do. Let's go ahead and pause the draft again here real fast. Because when I take a look at the wide receivers here, there's one name that sticks out as a potential safe option that's going super late in drafts. Is he gonna have the high upside that he had at one point in time when he was in Minnesota? Absolutely not. Adam Thielen's not gonna be that guy anymore. Understandable. But there's a really, really good chance that Adam Thielen for Carolina this year leads them in targets. And if he could get 100 to 110 targets, he's definitely a guy that could be a wide receiver three which in this scenario, given the fact that I'm just trying to find some safe options right now because I've gone a little bit heavy on the upside with wide receiver, I add him right now and that's absolutely perfect. So you know what? Let's go ahead and lock Adam Thielen in here. I do think he's a really nice balance to what we've done so far at the wide receiver position. And I do think there is a little bit opportunity for some upside when it comes back around to me here. Uh, at the wide receiver position. And again, I'm glad I locked my running backs in when I did, because when you take a look at some of these running backs, I mean, you could do like a Jarek McKinnon, you could grab a Tyler Algier. I Honestly, I don't know if I wanna own Algier unless I own Bijan Robinson. I wanna have his backup for sure, just in case. You've got a Devin Singletary, uh, Devin Singletary in Houston. You could take a, guy, a shot on a guy like Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Roshan Johnson, you could end up grabbing a little bit late. I can probably wait just a little bit longer on him though. Uh, backup tight ends right now. I could end up going with a guy like Jawan Johnson, Zach Ertz, um, Hayden Hurst is all the way down here. So I'm not really going, not really going there right now. And I took kickers out, so I've only got three picks left here. Um, let I, you know what? 
wide receiver. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves another wide receiver at this point. Uh, upside wise, you could go with a Jonathan Mingo. I already grabbed Adam Thielen then, so I'll probably stay away from Jonathan Mingo right now. You could go Sky Moore if you wanted to. That could definitely be an option. I'm looking more at a guy like Nico Collins down here. Has a chance to kind of be the big play person uh, there in Houston. And I think in a good, solid matchup, He's definitely a guy that you look at saying he could score a touchdown in any given week. So again, I'm going to continue to hammer some of these wide receivers here so I can give myself a really good balance because I just need to find two on a weekly basis and I got five right now. So every single week is like, okay, let me just go with the guys that are the highest upside because I know I'm going to have a lot of safety everywhere else. All right. And I will mention that a while back, I did a video where I talked about how running backs take in anywhere from like the fourth round on typically really don't become guys that have any type of fantasy value. And one dude that's like bordering on, hey, he's the next big breakout candidate and I really don't want anything to do with him is Roshan Johnson. Now, again, because of the way I have constructed my roster, I've got my tight end, I've got my quarterback. Honestly, I will back up my tight end just in case something were to happen. But with my quarterback, when I draft a guy like Josh Allen, I'm not like super crazy about trying to grab another guy. I'll just grab somebody off waivers if I really need to later in the season, um, especially just to get through that vibe. So for me personally, I think at this point, we've got our four safe running backs. Let's go ahead and grab a guy that could end up potentially having some upside this year. And now I don't know if he's absolutely going to unseat Khalil Herbert because Khalil Herbert himself is no slouch. But we'll take a shot on a guy like Roshan Johnson here late in the draft, add him to the team, add him to the mix. And then at that point, if something does happen, he does break out, becomes the starter. Then I've got five running backs that I can trust on a weekly basis. And again, last pick here, I'm gonna take a look at a tight end that I would like to grab. I'm gonna go with Juwan Johnson. Has a whole lot of upside, lot of red zone potential this year, which is what I really like. So let's go ahead and drop this down and we're gonna look at the entire draft board here real quick. And again, I don't mind drafting against Sleeper's computer because there's some really balanced teams. Now, if you were to look at some of the picks, you might say, well, I don't really think that guy would go there, but that's okay because who knows what our fantasy leagues are gonna do every single season, right? So it's good to kind of, again, go against a computer that you know is gonna stay balanced. Uh, most of the teams here did try to draft two quarterbacks. Team 12 decided to wait on their tight end till Sam Laporta. Is it, it is what it is, but everybody filled all of their slots, which is what we wanted here. Let's take a look at my team real quick and break it down. Travis Kelsey and Josh Allen. If you're thinking about going for a start with Travis Kelsey, and then you're thinking to yourself, do I wanna go running back next? Do I want a high upside quarterback? This is what it's gonna look like if you make the decision to go with a high upside quarterback. Najee Harris, Jameer Gibbs, DJ Moore, George Pickens, Pacheco Robinson. You really have to try and stay balanced throughout the rest of the, without the rest of your draft, because you don't wanna go too much upside. You don't wanna go too much floor either. And in this instance, I feel like I did a pretty decent job of trying to stay balanced the rest of the way. Najee Harris, Pacheco Robinson, all safe picks. Added in a Jameer Gibbs, he's got some upside. DJ Moore should be the wide receiver one in Chicago. Could have some inconsistencies, but then I backed him up with a guy like George Pickens and Gabe Davis, who should see a lot of upside. And then a guy like Adam Thielen, who could end up being a target monster, even if he's a guy that doesn't give us a whole lot of upside. Now for me personally, I don't hate this. Do I love it? No, but I don't hate it either. This is a roster that I feel like I could work with because I got some guys that I really like. And I do think DJ Moore and George Pickens are great right there in the middle. If I would have swung and missed on both of those guys and I would have ended up with some wide receivers that I didn't really like, then at that point, I would have been very concerned. Now, if you don't like George Pickens or you don't like DJ Moore, you probably look at this roster and say it's awful. So leave me a comment down below with your grade for this roster. Is it an A, A plus, is it a B, is it a D? Because there's no way in the world that you could do it. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you feel like you're having issues with your draft, then I'll pick somebody from the comments below. If this video gets 750 likes, 
to get a free draft guide from us. And then at that point, you don't have to worry about not having a good draft because our draft guide is definitely gonna help you bring home a championship this year. Headliner Nation, there you have it. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of some things that you do and do not want to do with your drafts this year. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and make sure you stick around for some banging content the rest of this off season. Peace out, Headliner Nation. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.